We're gonna be going through all the test features of the Astro AI AM33D. Whether you're a beginner or an expert, I think this channel is for everybody. If you are more experienced, a lot of this stuff is gonna be redundant. But if you're a beginner and you're learning, this would be a great opportunity to learn about this meter. I'm just gonna be going through the wheel, starting clockwise, showing you all the features and test uh, that this meter is capable of. Right off the bat, I think it's gonna be a really great beginner meter. We'll be doing some comparative measurements with a meter that I have a, on a little screen. That one doesn't have the capabilities to measure uh, amperage, so we'll be doing some comparative amperage measurements with the Fluke 115. So let's go ahead and get started. The first settings that we have here is gonna be volts AC. That's what that's standing for, and it's gonna have these different resolutions. That's what it's trying to tell Tell you for 600 volts you know if you're measuring 220 240 that would be the resolution that you would want to be at let's go ahead and get some ac power going here now for ac measurements polarity doesn't matter it is encouraged to use your hot to use the red lead as the hot and your black as the neutral you can do it either way so let's go ahead and take a reading showing 120 holding steady now let's check it at its finer resolution we're getting 120 20.7. Let's go ahead and make a comparative measurement with volts AC. We're showing 120.42. It's holding steady. So that's give you an idea of kind of the accuracy compared to a professional meter. Next we have amps DC. This little U here stands for micro. I don't have any any load set up for this test for doing micro. I do have a milliamp load available for us something to pay attention to on your meter you're gonna see it has these ratings 600 volt max 500 milliamps max when utilizing these settings in this probe configuration no more than 500 milliamps if you're gonna do more than 500 milliamps you'll wanna switch this red probe over into the next slot. Also, another thing to note, when utilizing your meter, it's important to know the difference between parallel and series. The measurements that we just did were done in parallel and don't need to be loaded. This set of measurements is gonna be in series and loaded uh, so that we can see the current draw from the component. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this lead. Notice I've pulled the red lead jumper wire so we can do this in series. First, let's put it to the 20 milliamp setting. And what that's gonna show us is that I have a 25 milliamp load. And so I kind of wanna show you how it works with the resolution. If you're outside of the window of your resolution, you're not gonna get a reading. And we're gonna see that here. It's showing negative one. Basically that's its way of showing open. The negative sign is just to annotate polarity. But if I switch over to 200 milliamps, we should get a reading. And there you go we're getting 26.1 let's see how that compares to saying 26 so that's actually really accurate that's really awesome i was not expecting that then you'll see 10 amps dc for that measurement we need to make sure that we switch this lead over luckily both are fused which means if you go over the current limit it should pop that fuse for you i don't know what kind of fuse it takes maybe we'll take it apart and see what kind of fuses it takes in case you do i have this light bulb here is about a two amp load dc and we are set to amperage dc 2.03 amps dc it's compared to our fluke which so far this thing's been pretty accurate so i'm pretty excited about that 2.04 okay really really close this next setting is going to be i think really interesting for those of you that don't know this setting is to annotate that it will output a square wave signal. So let me go ahead and bring up the scope. I'm gonna filter out some noise and then my scaling, put it to two volts. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this thing will output for a square wave so you all know, because I know the owner's manual is pretty vague. And so what we're gonna see, go ahead and make sure to switch our lead back. Got the scope pulled up and let's go ahead and take a look at our square wave output. We can put a trigger on there. So that's what that setting's doing, a square wave output. It's gonna be great for different types of troubleshooting um, and sensors. This meter has that capability. I thought was really interesting for a, such a low priced meter. 
but I really just wanted to show you all what was going on there. Next settings is diodes and continuity. So these little alligator clips, they don't come with the product. They're just slide on ones. I'll just be using them for filming. Oh yeah, this meter has a kickstand on it. I don't know why I'm not using that. Much better. Okay, so continuity is gonna give us a tone telling us that there's some type of continuity there. Let's see this diode function. If it works like other meters, it should be showing us a voltage drop across our diode. And it is, great. And this reading's gonna be in millivolts too. So this is, you know, 592 millivolts of voltage drop across our diode. And then we can go ahead and swap it and it should be an open. There shouldn't be any continuity this way. It's showing a one indicating an open, whereas obviously if there was continuity, we would have a tone. There's a couple different resolutions to your resistance measurements. I have two different examples of resistors here. Let's go ahead and swap this dial all the way up to 200 mega ohm. When we say mega ohm, try and think of like millions of ohms. So this should be a 47k ohm resistor. And so it's coming back 0.9. It's showing that there is some kind of resistance, but it doesn't really know. Think of resolution as like a camera being out of focus. And so it can see that there's an object that can see there's some kind of resistance, but we need to focus in this dial to get a more accurate reading. So let's try 20 milliohm, or excuse me, 20 mega ohm. We're still getting some kind of reading, but it, it's a four, so at least we're on the right track. Not until we get to this 200K, now we can see that we have a 47K ohm resistor. Our next setting is at 20K, and because this is at 47, that's out of the window that this can read. So it should show a one indicating that it's out of range. And it does, so now let's go ahead and swap, swap over. I believe this other resistor is just a 47 ohm resistor. And for resistance test, polarity doesn't matter. That's the black and red for your leads not gonna matter. Okay, we're at 20k ohm. It's showing a zero, so it knows there's some kind of resistance, but it has no clue what it is. Let's get to this 2000, okay, showing a nine, so it's getting more refined, but it's still not there. Oh, this is a 10 ohm resistor, sorry. So it's showing 10 ohms. Okay, great, so at that 2000, it was showing a nine, and at 200, showing a 10. Now we're gonna go ahead and look at volts DC. Again, it's gonna have these different resolutions. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at volts DC, we're gonna start at the 600 and work our way down to more and more refined. So here it's showing 12, 13 volts. Now we have a decimal place and our 200 volt setting showing 12.0, 11.9. So at 20, if I'm on the 20 volt DC setting and I'm measuring 12 volts DC, this should be the closest, best resolution for this type of measurement. Let's take a look at what it says. Okay, it's showing about 12. Okay, our other meter's holding steady at 11.99, and this one is showing 12.0. So it's within a hundredth of a volt. I think that's really good. And then for this 2000 millivolt and 200 millivolt, volt, it'll display a one because this will be out of range for the meter. Meter comes with the backlight and the hold button is just to hold your reading so that if you make a reading, you will press hold and then that'll save the reading for you. There you go. So that's the Astro AI AM33D. Very impressed. This thing is really accurate. The last meter that I reviewed uh, was this DT830 Bravo, and this thing is garbage. This thing is so terrible. This is only a few dollars more. So if you're a beginner, I would really recommend this meter. This is a great beginner meter, very accurate. The downfalls to this, we don't have a way to measure AC current with this meter, and I think that's the biggest downfall. Uh, I would also like to see a little bit better resolution for volts AC, but that's pretty common, about 600, 200 there. There you go, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments about what we talked about in the video series versus parallel or anything like that, please let me know, and I will do my best to clarify. So thank you for watching.